Well, first off, it's, it's, you know, January 3rd, we've just stepped into 2021. <laughs> Finally, we've arrived. And when I think of New Year's resolutions, I have to consider love. Like I have to think about how am I going to go deeper and expand more into love. And I happen to be you know, it's, it's strange to use that, that word single, I think, but, but in this moment, I, I happen to be, you know, fully free um, and in a, a place to welcome all types of connections into my life, knowing though that I do, I'm, I'm, I'm in my late 30s and I do plan to um, have a family and children one day. Uh, so anytime that I meet couples who, um, are just have a, a longevity and a, a story, a profound story, and someone that I can look up to and admire and love, like Richie and Mary, Marianne that we're going to meet this evening and be in conversation with. I invite you all, if you have a journal, um, take a journal out and, and keep one beside you with, with a pen and anything throughout the evening that, you know, sparks some type of curiosity within you, write down. Um, may have an epiphany, somebody might say something and share something. I also encourage you throughout the evening. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by having a, a dialogue with with Rich Richie and Marianne. And then I'm gonna invite you all into the conversation as well. So please like share your thoughts, ask your questions. This is where us in a collective get to explore love. You know, for for me, I I did. I, I grew up in a very lovely, lovely household with lots of friends and in a beautiful neighborhood. And my parents separated when I was 18. And since I've been, and, and they both remarried, um, had be, have beautiful relationships. Uh, but it's always just in my, my adult life and after having worked in the dating industry for like seven years, I have been looking around like, who are my relationship role models? Um, who, what, what type of relationships do I aim to, um, to have? And, and when I have challenges or, or conflict within my relationship, rather than dump it all on the partner that I'm with, where can I go to talk about it and talk it through? So, you know, within this, this evening tonight, I'd like to seed into your, to your minds of, to consider like, you know, who else besides being in this moment and meeting um, Rich and Marianne, who else um, do you look up to in love? And also I will add, you know, it's interesting to use this term role models because of now, you know, shortly entering into my 40s, oh dear, um, and amazing. I, um, I, I, I have also seen sometimes when we take people and we put them on a pedestal, and, and say they're role models, like they're also human as well. So they're going through all of their own challenges and struggles and, and stuff, especially at, um, I think in our, our younger younger years too. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce you now to Rich and Marianne. It's Richie, Richie, you know, do you, do you like Rich or Richie? Richie. Richie, okay, cool. Yeah. We, we have you as Rich in, in, in the chat. So we need to add that I to your name in there. That's um, call him Rich, so I put <laughs> Call him Rich. Richie's part of the evolution of my life. <laughs> Perfect. Before so me. I'll have to tell you how I met these two. Um, it was through their, one, of, one of their children, Christy, uh, was watching and seeing what was happening with, with Deepin. And she reached out and said, my mother um, hosts this tons of programs, Dance Alive has been uh, doing this work of transformational and ecstatic dance for nearly 40 plus years, um, <laughs> 50 years, bringing community together, opening them up. And I, she's like, it would be great for um, the Deepen platform. And I went and I started dancing with, the, with Marianne and it was beautiful to walk into the space and always see um, most of the times that Richie, you were there and you were present um, in the experience as well. And I would just be an admiration, like, look at these two, 42 years of marriage. Uh, so I love to, I guess, well, first welcome. Th thank you for, for being a part of this experience and saying yes to doing this, because I know that you're usually teaching your own programs. Uh, and I would love to launch us off into the conversation this evening to share your origin story. Like, where did you meet and, and how did you 
fall in love and decide to get married and to spend 42 years together. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'll have to give you a condensed version <laughs> for the sake of timing. <laughs> the condensed version is that um, we first met when, when we were 20 and Marianne was with somebody else and we were just friends. And we got together when we were 24 as friends, got more involved, then stopped being involved. And then a year later, I was with Mary Ann and we were in a dance studio and we were just dancing. And Mary Ann turned me on to, you know, like free dance, which literally freed my soul and still does. And while I was with her, I had this experience of, wow, I love being in the space I'm in, being with Marianne. So what I fell in love with initially was the feeling of me being free to be me while I was with Marianne and she was being free to being her. And I was like, wow, I haven't really felt this with anybody else like ever where I'm free to be myself. And based on that, I was actually, and I won't go into too much detail here. Then I was on her case like, oh man, we need to get together here. <laughs> and at the time we we're both living at our parents' house five minutes away. So I'd go over to her parents' house and have to leave at five in the morning before her parents woke up. That's mm -hmm. when we were 25 and now we're 68. So somehow we <laughs> found a way to make, work it out. <laughs> so that was my, that's my story of our origin. What's your story? Oh my gosh. We went through so many waves, so many waves of being in, being out. I mean, I remember one time when um, I was at my parents' house and we had, we'd both lived on our own, lived with partners, and then we had moved back to our parents' house at the same time. And Rich came and started coming over every day and I'm kind of like, what's with this guy? Like he just, keeps coming over all the time and but it was I was like I kind of didn't I didn't really know like mm. I mean we had been friends we'd been together we weren't together but then he just kept coming over <laughs> and I I felt cared for and I felt safe I think that's one of the main things I really have always felt with Rich is cared for and really safe. And um, yeah, but we went in and out in the beginning, like we were young and now, you know, looking back, it was like, oh my God, if he hadn't like held the rod, so to speak, like, hey, are you in or out? You know, I probably wouldn't have been in but he basically brought me to a point of choice. Um, are you in or out? And, it, and then I remember just like when I was in India, I went to India. And I remember just dropping in and he was like, if you're in, great, come home now. If you're out, that's fine. I totally support you and I'm done, you know? So I just remember closing my eyes and going, God, this is like the hardest decision of my life closing my eyes, dropping in, and then I just got, go home now, this is it, this is it, go home now. And I sold all my stuff and got a plane ticket and we've been together ever since and it was the best decision of my life. And it was not my inclination, I was more of a free spirit and, um, but what it gave me was just a sense of containment that there is somebody here who really had my back. And I think that's really one of the main things that I can say about both of us is we have each other's back and whatever challenges we go through. I mean, at this point we've raised three kids with, they're all married now. We have four grandkids. And so let, and we have two businesses, his business, my business, so life has its challenges. We're really real down-to-earth people with each other. 
And the main thing is, I would say, is we've got each other's back, and I am, like, so happy to have somebody who has my back no matter what. Mm. So that was really in the origin. I think that was what I felt when I dropped in was, and I didn't know consciously what I was experiencing, but looking back, like, oh, that's what I was responding to. I, um, oh, there's so much good stuff in there. You know, one of the things that just came to my mind is in that, you know, question that, um, Richie, that you posed is that are you are you in or out? That at, at this point, at, at this time, you two had known each other for a, a year or two, or what was the? A couple, couple of years. A couple of years, and you know, I, I I've heard people talk about that particular moment as an ultimatum, and I actually see it as more of not. I don't want to. Boundary is even a, another term for it. And, and um, I know Joseph is with us today, who's a, a love coach too. Uh, but it was really, you know, that, that defining moment, which people are often fearful of doing of what you did, uh, because they feel as though they're imposing on someone else. Women are, are usually, from my experience, it's looked at women um, negatively for, or negatively for um, asking for that choice and saying that, like, I'm, I'm out and within, it, it sounds like that you were very clear in that moment, which gave Marianne the, the, the ability to feel um, strength in, in, in having to make a choice. As you, as you said, you felt like that you, you need it to make a choice in that moment. So I love to dive a little bit more deeper yeah. in that moment. I can tell you exactly what I said. I'll remember it forever. <laughs> I said, even though we're meant to be come home now or forget it wow that's it <laughs> and again i've been going through let me backtrack i got a postcard on new year's eve and i was very much alone and then just trying to find myself and felt like marianne was the only person in the whole world that actually really got me i had a few friends my family was nice to me but i felt like marianne just her soul essence got my soul essence, which I didn't feel the same with anybody else. And I was going through a really hard time being alone. And at the same point, come home now or forget it. I'm not going to keep going through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so that it wasn't like something I was coached to do. It was like a soul conviction. So that's what I would say. You know, for me, it came out of a soul conviction. And I think I reached Marianne. She was in utopia, having the time of her life. She wasn't not into being with me. She was into completely enjoying herself. I wasn't in that situation. But it's the soul conviction of like, hey, if we're meant to be, this needs to happen like now. You know, like, so, but if I didn't have the conviction, it wouldn't have worked the same way. I would love just because on, on this topic, I'm going to jump into a gallery view and ask, you know, has anyone else ever been in that particular moment? Does anyone have that defining moment that they have encountered in their life, whether it's in a relationship that they're in now in this moment or um, are, are in before in the past? Yeah, Joseph. First of all, I'm here because of the love that Mary Ann has created with Richie, with each other, with their children, with their community. And I had a lot that I had planned to do this evening. And I said, there's no more important place for who I am to be on this call and hear about who they are together and how they started um, because what they've created with their love in their marriage, with their children, with the community. Um, it's the healthiest community I know of. Aww. And I have been studying love as my number one devotion since I was 13. So um, I'm honored to be here now with them. And Related to what's just been shared, I, I have an important uh, distinction that I think really matters and it connects to what you just said, Christina. Mm -hmm. And 
Richie, in my opinion, stepped into his masculinity and his clarity with that communication. And there's a very different experience between masculinity and femininity related to that kind of communication. If the opposite had occurred, if Marianne had said that to Richie, it would have been very different because the communication was a masculine clarity about commitment. And that would have been very different from the opposite polarity. So um, I thought mm, that's to put great. That. Yeah. I, I, Thanks, I, Joseph. Yeah, I, I, what you said, I think, is right on track completely. It was very masculine, completely. And for me, the key um, to share is the conviction of what I really feel in my heart and soul and being really authentic with that and not masquerading it and not pretending it and not pushing it. So it's a conviction, and you're absolutely right, Joseph. Yes, there's a gigantic difference between a masculine approach and a feminine approach and that's very important it's a great clarification yeah we're so great joseph at clarifying and putting into words like what's actually underlying so i just want to thank you for that yeah and i'm really happy you're here <laughs> And, and I also want to clarify, too, because, you know, we did get some messages um, as we were sharing that relationship role models is happening tonight from um, a people inquiring of what type of relationship is this for? Uh, is this for just, you know, um, with sexuality orientation? And so when you say masculine and feminine, these are energetic types. Yes. I see you nodding your head, um, Joseph. And, and actually, I'll, I'll even bring it back to um, Richie and, and Marianne. Within your relationship, is it that Marianne is the ultimate feminine energy and Richie is the masculine energy? Do they, does it dance? Do, does Marianne sometimes within the relationship become the, the masculine? How do, can you speak a little towards that? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, Marianne is like one of the most in command, in control of people I've ever met. So when she's into like, this is my house, I'm in charge or my class or my this or my that, or I feel like really strongly about this. She's not just being in some, oh, I want to like softly share my feelings with you. <laughs> it's very direct. So, so in terms of the masculine and feminine, the true marriage allows for the masculine and feminine in both of us to continue to grow. And we're in that, that's a dance that goes ongoingly of like, when to just know, hey, she's on point, let her be, don't interfere with it. And she'll do the same with me in giving space. And that's one of the most important things that keeps us successful is to keep giving each other space to do what we need to do. and that requires really paying attention and dropping in and really feeling what the flow is. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that happens between us is like, I, I totally lead certain areas and I'm really clear I'm leading and it's like get on board or whatever, but I'm leading this. Like I'm not giving up leading this because I know this needs to happen. And then Rich will go up against me, but it's it's like he's always testing, are you for real? Because if you're really leading this, then I have to test it to see if you're really completely firm, clear, and grounded in what you're leading. So we test each other and we don't take it like it's not like you're we're in a fight at all. It's more like we bounce up against each other, but that's how we move together. And so that's just part of our dynamic. And same with him. And then sometimes he's leading in an area. Sometimes I'm leading in an area. But we both like push up against each other because I don't know that that's the way to go until I actually can find, oh, you know what? that makes sense that makes sense okay but i don't know that until i bounce up against him and it's the same for him with me so we have a very 
active dynamic that keeps us very vital and alive together. And we're not trying to please each other. And we're also not in a fight with each other. We're just moving in a direction that is one that is really team oriented. And so what what is the healthiest is what ends up leading. Mm. When um, it, you speak about testing, it's interesting, even that word testing of, you know, you, you kind of hear that, um, you know, sometimes I'll hear like my, my mother be like, yell at me, like, don't like, stop testing me. Don't test me. But there's also the flip side of, of the idea of testing, because that is, I guess, creating the challenge for us to bump up against that confirms within ourself that I'm leading. I got this. I can yeah. keep going, keep moving through it. Um, when we talked, you know, pre pre yesterday, when we were talking about coming and, and doing this, having this conversation today, uh, you know, we, we, you mentioned about space and when that the two of you were in, um, in conflict in your past, that yeah. you learned to give each other space and often within, and, and Wait, before I, I, I jump into that, is that, you know, with, within that that space, it, it's there's some idea that, you know, we need to work everything out in the moment. Like we always want to just jump in, dive in, vomit all the information out above each other um, to work out any disagreements in that moment. There's even the, the never go to bed angry with one another. And I also see the other side of that, that actually sometimes it's good to go to bed angry with each other because then you can process through it and, and work through it afterwards. How have you two, um, when tension or conflict does arise, um, how has the way that you navigate it as a couple shifted and grown over time? Well, I'll start the answer to that. And then <laughs> when we were first together, Marianne was really aware of emotions really into communicating all of them. And I was more like quiet. And what would happen is I would get really overwhelmed. And when I get overwhelmed, then I wouldn't really be able to be in the discussion with Marianne. And what we learned over time is that if it's not working to be synergistic in conversation, it's actually damaging to continue to be in conversation. It's actually hurtful and there's no, nothing gets resolved. So we found that if we wanted to be really productive, if it's not working to talk, then to take space, whether it's five minutes or in the past, maybe many years ago, it may have been 24 hours. You know, now it doesn't take that long. It can be very brief, but just wait till we calm down so that we can actually really see each other and really hear each other. Because if we can't really see each other and really hear each other, there's sort of nothing to be gained in having a dispute about getting along. You know, it just, mm -hmm. so, so that's something we've learned to do that if we want to resolve things between us, then we need to be in a place of being at ease in ourself enough, at least, so that we're available to just talk like a normal human being instead of being in reactions. Mm -hmm. And, and that took a, that took some time to learn. You know? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And you know, no matter how upset I am, I know now, uh, with uh, obviously a lot of experience, I know now not to say a word, just to breathe and settle myself because I am not going to have a productive conversation and I'm not going to end up getting to a point where we're working together if I don't absolutely settle myself before I talk to Rich. And so that takes a lot of self-management and, um, yeah. and commitment to the team play, not just to like getting my feelings out or getting my, my self be, uh, my point be heard. It, you know, I can't be listened to if I can't really deeply listen to myself and be available to listen. So um, I've really cultivated that skill. And then we both really 
honor that with each other. Like if one person says, I'm not available, instead of pushing that, even though you want to have the conversation, we respect each other going, I'm not available. And then we know that we'll be available at a point down the road. And it's not, I mean, now it's like very quick, but you know, it wasn't always, yeah, sometimes it would take like 24 hours to be available, but however long it took, it was worth it. Mm. And what, um, I'm going to ask one last question and then open it up for group dialogue. And then we'll go into uh, some learning, some, some intimacy exercises or practices that the two of you do together. My, my question is, if what, um, what are your favorite things about each other? Yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. My favorite thing about Marianne is that there's a genuine soul sweetness to who she is that's, um, for me, beyond authentic. It's essential and that that sweetness of her soul that I feel allows me to drop more into me, to feel that in me. And the, there's a lot of things I like about Marianne, but I'll say a few of the top ones is. I like hearing yeah, this. She's, Good question. <laughs> yeah, Marianne is Marianne's extremely committed to whatever it is she's doing, whether it's me, whether it's our kids, whether it's her business, her clients, what it, what, whether it's taking care of her own health, whatever it is, Marianne's very committed and she's very involved in life. And I love that she's very involved with life. It's not like, what is life? What should I do? It's more she's in process. And being in process can be also meditating and being still. It doesn't mean necessarily being active. It's being engaged. So being with Marianne is like, an ongoing engagement. So even though we're married, I'm ongoing engaged with life with Marianne because she's so engaging to be with. So I could say more, but I'll stop right there. That's so sweet. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So my turn. Yeah. Um, what do I, what are some of my favorite things I love about you? Well, I love your heart. You're just same thing you're so sweet like you just have such like pure kindness in you and you just really always want the best for me for our family for like everyone that we know and everyone like you have such a tenderness about you and I also love your like go for itness that you know, we've had all kinds of things and you've had all kinds of things to work with in your life, with your business and kids and everything. And you're just like, hey, I'm going to make this happen. Like, I'm going to like, I'm going to accomplish this, whatever it is. And there can be like all these obstacles that come up that are just seem really, really beyond challenging. And you're like, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. It's like that underlying determination and grit to just face life. And you're also just down to earth. You're not like some, um, I don't know, academic intellectual that's operating off of any kind of book knowledge. You're operating off of like pure instinct, desire, and, um, and heart-based commitment. And I just love your go for itness and your your strength and also your openness and willingness to um, keep keep expanding and keep growing and keep opening and and let your guard down and and share share yourself with me. And yes. I could go on. And you're playful, and you love being. You're playful too mm -hmm. in your, in your uh, outlook, in in life, and yeah, you like to be amused, and you're you're amused by me, and you're I amused am. by people. I am. You're amused by all these situations, and you're just like amused. And 
it's like kind of irritating at the same time I <laughs> love it I love it it's kind of amusing because I'm like what this is intense situation you're like amused by it and I I actually appreciate that <laughs> oh I love that exercise that's one of my favorite exercises to be with somebody uh, we do it with the, the team, Team Deepen. We do that at, sometimes at our meetings and we tell each other all the things that we love about each other. So that was a beautiful moment to be in together with you all. Okay. I, I love to open it up to, um, to the thoughts that you all have to share with us. Um, you know, maybe it's more of intention of why you're here with us and what you're aiming to, to get or any questions that you have for uh, Richie and, and Marianne. Feel free to use the chat too and I can. Oh, you're echoing again. <laughs> Meredith, it's so beautiful to see you here. What are your thoughts? Hi, hi everyone. Um, my thoughts are be at home alone doing work or jump on a Zoom and see some other faces and be a little bit connected to humanity and hear a good story. And so it's, so at the very last minute, I, like there were nine minutes before it started, I was like, oh, okay, I'm doing this. Um, yeah. so, it, so I love hearing the story. And I did, it was interesting when we were talking about the, the masculine and the feminine and sort of the traditional places that, that those energies hold. And then, uh, Marianne, you were talking about being in charge, but relating that to the, the masculine. And it just got me thinking about like old, old tribal stuff and how the women were the ones who held and did so much to, to make everything work in, in the communities, but we're still now thinking of that in a more masculine way. That, that was just the question that came up for me. I was like, wait a minute, why is that masculine? Just something to think about. Well, I think you can call it all different things. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's yin and yang, you know, it's the same thing that they're two different energies. There's the assertive and the receptive and that we all have access to both and what i find is men access the assertive first and then the receptive and women access the receptive first and then the assertive that's just the biological cycle of how our energy systems work and so it's it, masculine and feminine is just are just words right. for energy flow so I, it's not, you know, that anyway, that's how I relate to it. It's more energy, just energy flows. Yeah. And for me, the masculine and feminine is in both of us. And it's sort of like having a right and left hand or being able to breathe in and out. There's masculine and feminine, and then that's the balance. And to what degree I can't fully be in charge and control, I'm not honoring my masculine, whether I'm male or female. At the same point, if I can't receive what's going on and really feel what's going on, being more receptive, then I can't really feel what's going on. And whether that's, whether I'm a man or a woman. So it's not about being a man or a woman. It's actually about including the full gradation of both. And I feel that um, one of the things that Marianne and I have gotten in our relationship and marriage and commitment is to fully embrace each other and embracing each other to embrace ourselves individually to bring out the full range of who we are. So for me, it's all about the, having the full range so we have everything. And at the same point, you know, um, I'm a man and she's a woman. Hmm. You know? and, we're, and we're cultivating both. And that's the key is to cultivate both. We, we have um, a question from Julie and John in the chat. Yeah, yeah. We, they're going to ask, ask, ask them? them? Or read well, it? Or read it? Well, actually, you're echoing again, um, Jonathan. 
I, shouldn't uh, be. I have a question too when you're done. Uh, All right. Does, does Julie and John, or you, do you want to turn your, unmute yourself and, oh yeah, hey. good to see you, amazing, hello. Um, so yeah, I was just wondering about um, things that you two do to nurture your relationship. A lot of people talk about like working on your marriage, but I kind of like to think more about, you know, like ways to attend to the relationship or nurture it. And I'm just wondering, you know, what you two do and what advice you might have for others. What was it? Fair. Um, well, the, the, there's a couple, two, two parts to the answer for me. One part of the answer is nurturing our relationship means for me to take care of the things I'm supposed to take care of. So right now, Miriam's busier with work than I am in terms of how much she works. So, you know, I'll take care of our garden. I'll shop more, make sure we have food, clean the kitchen more, do things that, that support our household. So that's one part. What can I do to be in support so we can even be in a relationship in the way we want? And in terms of nurturing, it's just to really be with each other and be available. And we can do that, whether it's, you know, going for walks, going to the store, you know, just mm -hmm. hanging out, laying in bed and holding each other. It's more of a, a, a quality of being together. And then in that quality of being together could include any activity, you know, from any, it could include anything. But the main thing is just wanting to be each other and setting up the space so we can just be together and we're not distracted, which in our life is a challenge <laughs> <laughs> because of so many things happening. Yeah. Does that answer it? Or, or, I, I think I there's a little more too I'd yeah. like to add yeah. is that we've gone through so many different cycles and stages that at different points in our life, you know, we went out dancing together at different points in our life. We went to the beach all the time and, um, you know, both loved the ocean and Richard turned me on to the ocean when our very, when we were first together. And then we spent years and years going to the ocean. So, and then after like 40 years or so, then Richard stopped liking going to the ocean, but I still love it. So, you know, we go, we've gone through different, so many different cycles. And just like last night, he's like, I want to go to Irwan and get some turkey gravy. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go with you, you know? And I went to go with him. And it was like, I said, you know, it's so nice just that we get to be together and go to the market. <laughs> like, that's an event, you know? And we appreciated the time being there. And then I got there and I was like starting to go up the elevator and I'm like, and you know what? I'm really tired. I don't want to be in the market. I just wanted to go with him. So I went in the car and just laid down till he got out of the market. And I felt more rested and available. So it's really, yeah, it's more like what cycle are we in right now in terms of our activity? But the appreciation of, well, we have time together and this is what we're doing. Yeah. And we also love listening to music together. Sure. Um, and one of the keys when we had uh -huh. kid, young kids, like I remember, you know, when I mean, when they were, we had three, we would get babysitting every Saturday at four o'clock. And then we went, our room would be in the back. So we wouldn't be part of the house. We wouldn't leave till 830. So we had four and a half hours to do whatever we need to do together. And, and the first two hours, we would take a nap. So yeah. we're even available. Right. We'd take so. an, and then we'd go out and we'd get home at one in the morning. So we, we would like make sure like where, you know, when we were didn't have kids and could do a lot of stuff together, we made sure to be able to continue that even once we did have kids. So I think the key thing, even though we've been through many cycles over all these years, is just what's nourishing. What can we do that's nourishing? And if we really like being together, as Marianne said, just going to the market is like an event. <laughs> now, it wouldn't have been 40 years ago. <laughs> but now, to, oh, we get to go to the market, nobody's bothering us. How cool. <laughs> right. And obviously, it can go way beyond that. But it's basically, it's the quality of, a, of attention to each other and appreciating just so we get to be together. 
Yeah, because yeah. we're both really b busy too. I mean, we've got business and kids and grandkids, and so we, and we both need time alone too. Yeah. So that's something else we both really do. Like, Rich will work in the garden, and I'll sit out on the deck and just lay down on the deck and. Like that feels like really good time together. Like we're both getting to be alone and be together. Mm -hmm. So I think not to like try to box yourself into anything, just to be open to like, you know, what's nurturing right now. And being alone together is actually very nurturing for both of us too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, um, uh, Julie, I love that you give looks to John um, throughout as you're shaking your head like, yes, honey, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Adorable. Um, thank you so much. And I um, I want to, oh, did I mute too? Did I? Um, I'm going to, oh, great. I, we also have another question that I see from um, Zen in the chat. And if if you'd like to come out and, and ask your question and unmute yourself you're more than welcome to or oh, oh wonderful hi my name is actually susan but susan oh you asked for my instagram thing so um uh yeah just uh, tips and how you you know how you're able to check in with one another in either you know fairly regular basis but so that you continue to emphasize your evolution, your mutual and personal evolution, and that you don't fall into taking your relationship and one another for granted. That's my question, because That's I a think- great question. Mm -hmm. That's an ongoing question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we deal with that question every day. Yeah. You know, it's like, how, and, and um, well, the key is just being in communication. You know, we'll even text inside our house call whatever we you know be it's like constantly be in touch to check in and all and also to be clear about times you know like hey even if hey i'm gonna take time alone and then i'll be back here so the so being in clear communication so that we know when to expect to be together and then that's that's i think the communication is is the, the key thing and just checking in and seeing and sometimes one of us is disappointed you know that happens regularly yeah i thought we were gonna be together oh no it's got to, he's got to handle this phone call today like today yeah yeah so but i think we're also really fluid with it too right That's you know it's like there's an underlying feeling like hey we're on the same page and we have a lot of different responsibilities too and we can't control the timing of a lot of things so what we can do is stay yeah stay in communication and i, I just know underlyingly like hey w receive that richard's rich is there for me like right. i have to open to receiving that no matter what it looks like on the outside right hmm. and that comes with time Time. It definitely comes with time. And for me, like even that when, you know, Marianne's, you know, busy with clients, you know, and maybe she has things or business things come up um, like all the time and she needs to deal with it. That's why she's so good. She's she's on. So I know when she's doing her business or dealing with a client, I know she's also, you know, like I'm part of that. She's doing it for me. You know, it's like it's, she's doing it for us. So a key is to also understand that what we're doing together, we're doing for us, even when we're doing separate things. And then, but the communication is the key thing. And mm -hmm. the better we have, we are with our communication, then the more it allows for different opportunities to happen and a greater understanding of, of oh, hey, I can do this with you for this long. Oh, okay, great, let's do this now. And obviously after over 40 years of being together, we're not worried about, are we gonna be able to be together? So we know it's, there's going to be the next day, the next day, and the next day. So what can we do today? What happens? And we get pulled in all different directions. So navigating that is one of the biggest keys to our success is navigating being pulled in so many different directions and still coming back to being together. And just even like, that's why with so many things going on, I mean, it seems sort of silly right now. I want to said this 20 or 30 years ago, <laughs> but just, just to be able to go to the market together. 
<laughs> you know, or just I'm outside in the garden, just I'm fixing up the garden. Marion's just lying down. That's like, well, I want the garden to be beautiful for her. So here yeah. she is. She's the maiden of the garden. <laughs> so it's it's also an inclusive way of sharing where you're, where you're sharing space and you know the per person's there. You know, and that does require enough contact so that, you know, that, that, that it can be felt, you know, and sometimes Marion needs more contact from me and then she'll tell me, or I want to do something. So the communication is really, really the key. You, you know what this also reminds me of, of your question, Susan, is one of my, um, another one of my role models is Dr. Sarah Nazaratam, and she is a, a a social psychologist and she focuses on intimacy and relationships and she told me years ago she said when you're in partnership with someone else and one is doing something that is changing them whether it's reading a book or going to a plant ceremony or, or, or anything that is transformational that they go and invite their partner and ask them like this book is changing please read this book or you know i'm doing this experience please have this experience too uh, is that something as well that within a relationship that has um, exceeded beyond 41 years, is that true for you as well? Um, it's more we share inspirations about what we're doing. It's not like I read a book and have Marianne read the book. We're not active yeah. book readers, but we'll, we'll sh when it comes to, um, we like to share things, but the older we've gotten, the more we like to do different things that we don't want to share. So the so the key is to give ourselves space to do that, but then share if it's a music, or I'll share the inspiration behind things, and I'll share Marianne. You know, I was on with David Guetta for New Year's Eve. You know, she doesn't want to do that, but I'll tell her how great it was, and she'll get it was great for me. So it's more sharing about our experiences because we really care about each other. You know, and sometimes we can share. You know, I'll show. Marianne, a flower. Oh, check out this flower or check this out. I mean, I love showing her things, but in terms of like, you have to read this book or watch this movie. We don't, we don't really do that, but it's just because of our lifestyle more. If I was reading a lot, then I would do that, you know? So I know we have two more questions that had, um, I think there's, there's three more questions that are coming. Them, yeah. Ian, Joseph and um, Michael. Now, uh, because this, we have an intimate group uh, here tonight, I want to ask for um, a question from you. So we, we can go in, we can keep discussing and having this group dialogue, or we can go into um, Marianne and Richie teaching us some intimacy exercises or practices. Which would you prefer? What's the thumbs up, Ian, for? Oh, the practices. Practices, OK. Voting for that, yeah. Is this, did, um, Joseph, do you have a, bur I know your questions are so good. Do you have a burning question that you want to ask um, first? I have a burning question and it might lead into a practice. Okay, great. And then Michael, we'll get to your question before the end of the evening too. Yeah. Almost everything that Marianne and Richie have shared, I've gone, that is such a useful, way to listen to one's partner and to um, perceive one's partner and to perceive oneself. And so the amount of health that is in your relating, in my experience, is just fantastic. And the quality of your attention to each other, your respect for each other, the, the, uh, just the whole context and framing of all of it, just so, so healthy. So here's my question is, did you just get really, really lucky that you both have naturally evolved to be able to see and hear and feel and communicate with each other so well? Or have one of you or both of you taught each other deliberately to be able to hold each other in the context that you do and communicate with each other with the quality of attention that you do? That is such a great question. Awesome question. Yeah, I'll, I'll just start because yeah. Marianne's so good. She just fills in whatever I didn't cover. <laughs> um, basically, um, yeah, Marianne's definitely educated me about her. I've educated her about me. And perhaps more importantly, we've had outside help the whole time we've been in our marriage. People that have helped in different ways. You know, I won't go into it depending on what we needed. 
mostly for our personal evolution. You know, like what do we need to be involved so we can be really our own authentic self and enjoy our life. And the more we're able to work on ourselves individually, the more we can then bring that into the relationship. And Marianne's been like teaching me what she's needed as long as we've been together. <laughs> you know, and I let her know, you know, what, okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. Or, hmm, let me see. And then things that are really important to me, I let her know. So it, it's, it's an ongoing involvement, both together and also individually for our own self-development. I think to every degree, you know, I, like Marianne's life would get better and better. And mine wouldn't get better as fast as hers was. I thought she would get other people to help her with stuff so she could continue to learn and grow faster and easier. So after a while I caught on, I was like, wow, man, I got to do things to better myself. So there's the bettering ourselves individually, which our own sort of personal process and in whatever way that is. And then it's like continuing to teach each other in relationship and also backing off as opposed to you have to do this. No, you don't. However, if you want me to be into you, this would be really helpful. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and so, but that, that's the more that's done, um, spaciously, the better it works. Great question. Yeah. Really good question. Um, I feel like I'm definitely always on the edge of, okay, how do we, how do I communicate in a way to really reach Rhett? And that is really my, an underlying desire in my, in my, in me is, okay, I want to, I want to be successful in my communication. And so I study when I communicate a certain way and it doesn't reach him, then I'm, I get frustrated. And I'm like, okay, well, let me find another way. Let me find another angle. And so that is kind of, it's an ongoing creative process is my, my real dedication to, hey, I want us to work together well. So in order to do that, I have to find a way in that works well right now. And like, I mean, he'll say something to me and I'll say, are you aware that 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 you you sounded irritated that that sounded really irritable to me? You know, you could say it like this, and then I'll just model it, and he'll go okay, and then he'll say it like that. But that took some years, definitely years, to then oh okay, let me say it like this because that reaches me. So I would say um, we're constantly um, playing with new ways of creating flow between us. And yeah, I've always gotten tons of outside help. I listened to, today I listened to um, the Dalai Lama. I mean, I'm always listening to people that will inspire me and then bring something new in so that I can um, bring more of myself um, more compassion and more kindness and um, just more love, really, into my life. Mm. So let's. Yesterday we we spoke about uh, an activity for for the group or teaching an, an an exercise. So I'd love to move into that because both of you are teachers, both of you are coaches. Both of you have such in-depth knowledge to share. So if we were to take all the words and put them into action, what are some things that we can do to stay connected with each other? And these are activities to do um, with your significant other if you're in relationship or potentially even on a, on a first date. All right, well, I, I can show you something very simple that you can do with anybody. And it's it's not a romantic exercise. And um, here, I'll face Marianne. 
Here, let's fade. Turn. And you can do this on a first date. Or you can do this with your mother or father or anybody. It's really cool. I think that's kind of the first, that's our orientation, mm -hmm. is our friendship. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. It's being friends. So you, I'm going to, I'll tell you what, we're do, let's put our hands up so you can see. Normally, I would put my left hand on my left knee. Marion would put her left hand on her left knee. Oh, excuse me. And you can, uh, and then what you do, you, you can do this yourself. Just put your left hand on your left knee facing up and your right hand on your right knee facing up like this. Okay, because because you don't have anybody to do it with, but you can so you can see how to do it. Let's see, make sure our hands are high enough. And what you do is it's very simple. You just look at the other person, and then breathe in from your left hand and your left foot. However you do, settling in yourself and seeing the other person without thinking with just being present. And then you breathe out through your right hand and right foot. And the reason you breathe in and out through your feet is so that you're grounding your energy into the earth. And then you're grounding the energy in your body. And what this does is it creates a flow where I'm receiving Mary Ann and I'm giving to Mary Ann energetically and she's receiving to me and giving to me. And for me, this is a very important basis for being in relationship. So, and you can do this for five or 10 minutes. And what it does is that you settle more in your body. You receive yourself. You receive the other person and you synergize with them. And I want to say whether you're touching someone or not, you can do this anywhere, anytime with mm -hmm. anybody. Yeah, exactly. So you don't need to be touching. He's just, he's just showing the physical, but what we do regularly is we're not doing this actual activity, but we're doing it energetically. So I just wanted to bring in that, so you don't feel like you have to be in this certain position, because it's really about the energy flow. The point of the position is to give you more of experience of right. just being able to do that. And again, you can even do it on your own. The advantage in partnership is it creates more being settled, really seeing the other person, mm -hmm. not being in your head, not even being in your emotions, and just being present with them. Because there can be so much excitement about what love means. Until there's presence, there's no place for love to exist. So presence, by being present, that allows like a container for the love to come in. So this is just a simple exercise you can do with somebody else. You could do it on a first date. It doesn't mean you'll have a second date. Maybe let's enjoy your date more. <laughs> or you can do it, as I said, with anybody, or you can do it with your own hands on your own lap just to receive yourself more. So in the, when Christina asked about this, this is just what came to mind because it creates more of a condition of just being present. And for me, relationships start by being present. So that's what I wanted to share. So. I am. Um, and I, yeah. Go ahead, Christina. I was going to say, I, I love this practice and the, this exercise and to have the opportunity to do that with anyone. I recently um, took a journey cross country mm -hmm. on a first date. <laughs> it was like we drove cross country during COVID on a first date as I was moving from Los Angeles to um, home to Annapolis, Maryland. And we did this in Sedona out in the woods um, as we were hiking, I guess, in the desert. And it was, it really dropped us in and connected us. 
and it felt super intimate and it, it, it just, it kind of lights up your whole entire body. And I would even say that this practice can be done even in the virtual space in zoom, because I know a lot of couples are now meeting for the first time digitally. And this is something that you can do on the screen. It's, about, it's, a, it's, it's all about the quality of attention, which, start, which starts by dropping into yourself and just being available and sort of letting everything else in the world, including your own thoughts and emotions, just sort of go away and just be present yourself and other, with the other person. So you're absolutely right, Christina. You can do it. And I, I, want, to add, I want to add to that once that dropped in space is there, that what I would bring in as a practice is just to share what's what's here. Like what I want you to know about me right now mm -hmm. is I want you to know like maybe how I, how I see you. And I, I want you to know, well, I want you to know about me that I'm uncomfortable and I feel, a little awkward being seen or I feel open to you seeing me like what so whatever wants to start coming out then I would bring that as the the other part of this mm -hmm. is to bring in you know communication coming from what's really true for you and and I also would say that my focus is on team building it's not just being able to express myself, but it's like, what is going to build our partnership right now? And so that focus on like right now, if I just want to express myself, I might just, ah, whatever, la, 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 where if I focus on our partnership, then I actually settle my energy more to just relate to wretch right now. So I, I focus on the partnership when I'm in partnership as to how that can really build. But I think the what Rich is bringing in about the settling and the connecting and the flow of energy is like the where it starts and then the expression of where to go together is the next thing to bring in. Mm -hmm. So it's like the the full cycle. Right. So you're, you're sharing from a, a dropped in place where you're more just in yourself. Yeah. So you're, you're being your more authentic self. And when you share from, you know, your more authentic self with, with another person, that is intimacy. Because mm. you're opening your heart and your soul to them. That's very intimate. Do you think we could try this exercise as a group here this evening? I know we're in the digital space, but in a way of just taking, you know, maybe three minutes, if everyone could yeah. turn their camera on sure. and um, uh, Marianne and, and Richie, if you want to guide us through and, and, and um, I know if, if, Jonathan, if you happen to have, do you have music accessible? Yes, I do. Okay, maybe even uh, taking a a, a song um, and piping it in and we can take three minutes to be present with each other. Mm -hmm. Sure. Marianne and Richie, you can guide us or anything that we could share as we're, as we're doing this activity. Sure, sure, yeah. Let me just ask you, do we have three minutes total or more? No, three minutes. Well, you can have a couple. We, we have till we have 13 more minutes left in this experience. And I do want to hear what I know Ian had a, a question and a thought and Michael had a question and a thought. So I want to um, maybe before we, we jump into this exercise, if Ian and Michael could ask their questions so we have those seated and then we know how to use the time to, to wrap it up. Great. Great. Uh, yeah, I was just I'm. Um learning this new balance of like holding a, like a vulnerable, open, honest, you know, you know, transparency or sharing with like 
maintaining some polarity and like a new relationship where you're not oversharing. So it's something interesting. I'm curious how you look at the balance of like being honest and vulnerable, but not like too much too fast um, and maintaining like a polarity between you. Mm. So now let's not answer the question yet. Let's do the exercise first and then let's hear Michael's question. We'll come back and answer those questions at the end before we wrap. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so my question is about commitment and freedom. So there appears to be um, a conflict between the two, or that's one way that one I think could think about relationships and certainly um, uh, that there is, you know, there is commitment and there's freedom and that they, that they might be somehow at odds with each other. Um, I don't think that's entirely the case, but it was interesting, uh, Richie, you mentioned, um, you met Marianne in the story you were telling that um, like you had asked for commitment and then the way you described it was, well, she was a free spirit and the the appearance of that is there's a conflict between commitment and freedom. Um, but I'm curious what your what your experience of, of those are, and if um, uh, if you could speak if you could speak to commitment and freedom and how they how they coexist. Yeah. Okay. We can bring it into the. I can bring it into the exercise. Good questions. Really yeah. good questions. Okay. So you want to do the exercise now and then answer the questions later, right? Yeah. And if you feel something different, you're more than welcome to, to do it differently. So go ahead. Let's do the exercise first. Okay. Well, since you lead part and then I'll yeah. lead part. Yes. Yeah, since, since most of you are, um, I guess, alone, then just put your left hand on your left knee and down, uh, open and your right hand on your right knee facing down. And if you're with a partner, you can do this together or just do it individually, either way. And what you do is you, so let your left hand just drop onto your left knee. So you're not holding your hand up and your hands open. And then you breathe in easily, however you feel like it, whatever's natural. And also, imagine breathing up through your left foot. It's coming through your left hand. It's coming through your whole torso, your chest, your belly. And you're breathing down through your right hand into your right knee without pushing. It's just gently on your knee and then having a sense of the energy going down through your right foot into the earth. Are our eyes open or closed? Either. Your eyes can be open, your eyes can be closed. Whatever feels good to you. And you can keep letting them flicker also. Yeah. Open and close as you feel. Yeah. And then it's a matter of just dropping into feeling your breath in your belly. So what happens is when you open on the left, your receptive side and receive and let the breath and energy in and you're fully open to receive and you're not pressing and then you're allowing that energy to come down through the right side. It creates a circuit in your body with the earth and with the energy of the earth. And from this, you can just let go and breathe and keep settling into it. However you do it. and see how that fills you and how it feels.
And as you're doing this, I would say at this point, play with opening your eyes and staying connected inside to your own breath. And sense the commitment you have to being here with everyone here. And find the freedom inside you as you stay in relationship with yourself and with each person you're seeing. So there's a commitment to what we're practicing. There's a commitment to being here with ourselves and with each other. And there's infinite freedom within this commitment. And wherever you notice any holding, just embrace it. And continue to stay in relationship. And allow your breath to flow freely and easily through you as you stay in relationship. And what I'd like to invite everyone to do, one at a time, whoever is inspired, is to share what your experience is right now. I'll share my, it was nice to, to just be present with everyone in the space and not be thinking about what I'm going to say and just to look around and, and ex experience you mm -hmm. all as me. Great, thank you. I felt the uh, exchange of of that flow of giving and receiving. That uh, we're all giving what we could, but we're also open to receiving what we could. Great. That felt great. I like the idea of how you of how the um, commitment to this moment while we also have our own inherent freedom is so important and so beautiful. That was so beautifully demonstrated and, and um, embodied right then. So it's a great thing to take forward with us. Thank you. I appreciated um, the presence. I really felt the presence here. Um, just appreciation, just like I felt that fluid, that, that flow of it gone through me. And I wanna um, just share really quickly, I, um, how you guys spoke in the beginning about energies and uh, masculinity and femininity. And I was just listening, um, I date women. So for me, um, I appreciated the conversation and the dialogue and what I really took from this that I felt I can use in my future partnership is um, I really loved the way that you, that exercise when you both acknowledged each other and what you liked about each other. I felt that presence, like I can feel that energy that you both had and just that genuine love I experienced between you two. Um, 
I loved about how uh, you expressed uh, commitment and being team oriented and partnership um, and honoring to listening and respecting each other. Um, that really came through for me. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You made, me, you made me, you highlighted how a lot of times we get caught up in what we're saying and what we're doing and what we're thinking and what we're communicating or not communicating or being heard or not being heard. And this was like a great example tangibly to be like, sometimes you just need to like be together and I don't think we talk about that or focus on that enough and it's like hard for people but just sitting here for a few minutes was like oh we don't need to figure everything out all the time sometimes you can just be so that was cool I want to um, honor time and we have 30 seconds until 9 30 and so at, at this point, I, I wanna close this out. And if you are available to stay a little bit extra of time, we'll go into answering Ian's questions and Michael's question as well. Um, but if you need to exit out of the experience, thank you so much for joining us this evening at the first interactive relationship role models, a place to see love lived. We're gonna be doing this the first Sunday monthly. So come back and join us. The next one is February 7th. Our role models are still to be determined, but we have reached out to some pretty interesting, um, special people to share with you all. One of um, corresponding with um, Glenn and Doyle and, and, and Abby, if you love Warrior, I would love to get them in and Dan Savage and his significant other, um, Terry. Um, so lots of lots of seeds planted. And if there's anyone that you would like to recommend, please feel free to send us a message and we'll happily send them an email. We have noticed right now that a lot of people are available and they'll come and they'll join us on these calls. So whoever you wanna see, please feel free to share them with us. Um, also this coming Wednesday, we have two special programs back to back. The first one is Copreneurs. Um, Copreneur is a business networking and entrepreneur meetup. Um, Lindsay Tabas is going to be a featured guest. She's the lady engineer. So if you want to come and have a space to talk about what you're up to business-wise and what you're focusing on work-wise and share your projects, um, as well as, as meet people to network with and learn something new, share us at Copreneurs. After that program, so that one's at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. After at, at 6 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. I know we have people from all different time zones here today, uh, but after that one is Mind Sports. And Mind Sports is um, a conscious debate experience. Um, this week, uh, the, the um, Indy and Adam who host and moderate, or guide and moderate that experience really wanted to discuss the lockdown. Uh, so we're at the conversation is opening versus closing. And uh, we have the, Senator of Washington, D.C. joining us, as well as a teacher, a restaurant owner, um, a startup founder. So it's going to be a really deep conversation as we go into opening versus closing, even those concepts of opening versus closing. And then Sunday, the 10th, is Hum Hum Conscious Dating Salon. So if you want to come and, and practice um, dating, and I say this is practice because it's not a space to come into and feel like heaviness around like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go into a, a online dating experience. No, it's a place to come and practice. And hey, maybe you'll meet somebody um, that becomes super significant in your life. And the last one I want to share with you about is Kosh Codes. When we had live experiences back in early 2020, um, Kosh Codes was, is, it was a live experience and we're bringing it into the online space and it's a group Akashic record reading. If you've ever experienced any of, of Abraham Hicks, it's a space to come into and you can ask your profound life questions about work, love and relationship and 
Daniela Gill channels from the Akashic Records um, and answers those questions. Um, so everyone will have the opportunity to ask, um, as well as um, usually when you listen to the answers, you everyone can can get something from from that experience. So that's January 10th. Um, I'm sorry, January 11th. It's a Monday, January 11th, um, and we're bringing that one back. Thank you all for joining in. We're going to go into those those two last questions. Um, if you have to take off, please feel free to do so. Um, and I'd love to pass it back to Marianne and Richie to um, dive into the, the questions that Michael and Ian had. Great. Um, well, yeah. I was gonna say, you remember what the question was or do you want me to repeat? No, Ian, say your question again. Just about maintaining polarity in this new world of like, you know, on one hand, you you know, we, we there is a value of some polarity and kind of tension. And there is also now like everything's like, you know, transparent, vulnerable. You want to share your inner deep secrets and be totally honest. So how do you balance that like, you know, mystique and some amount of kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, not like, oversharing but being vulnerable at the same time you know great question great. yeah and for me what what's there to say is it's a step-by-step -step process you know it's like if you're with somebody why are you with them what do you want from being with them and if what you want to be with them is to get to know them then it's a matter of just more of a casual sharing in the beginning, you know, where, where it's more like the more you get to know somebody, the more you may feel like sharing with them. But the key thing is that you're sharing together, not sharing about you. Okay. So your intimate secrets mm -hmm. is like, as far as I'm concerned, it's definitely not a starting point. Mm -hmm. You know, the starting point is, wow, I'm really happy to be with you. You know, maybe you're meeting a restaurant. Hey, what looks good to you? It's like, it's like starting with just being engaged and then continuing with just being engaged with the person and allowing the engagement and the natural flow of what happens there to sort of dictate to you what you feel like saying. You know, I know that's very general, um, but for me, that's, 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 that's what I have to say. And if somebody's really that interested, they want to know different things about you, they may ask you. And if they don't, then you're not obligated to say anything, you know? So, but these are things, the longer you're in relationship, the more gets shared, you know? But the main thing, the main thing oh, is to sorry. be in contact. The main thing is to be in contact. Like, what are you doing to be in contact with that person now? So they feel, hey, you're with them. They're not with your story. They're with you. That's good. So, so earlier I asked a question when you were saying the question uh, during the exercise of what I want you to know right now, you, you're kind of, um, if I understand correctly, thinking of it more in terms of what I want you to know about my experience with you or getting to know you or where, what I want to know more about with you, not what I want you to know is right. here's a bunch right. of history and bit about who right. I am. Exactly. You got right. it. You got it. Right. Exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah. And the key in relationship is the more engaging you are with the person, not just yourself, but with the other person, as long as there's a synergy there, right? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. But as long as there's a synergy, the more you're engaging with them, the more they can engage with you. And that ongoing engagement together will create more and more engagement, which creates more and more openings. And the key thing is your engagement together in the present. That's the number one event. So if if so, if you if you hold that as your number one focus, like I'm engaging with this person so that I'm with them and I'm drawing them out and they're drawing me out, then you may be talking about silly things. You know, like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. the, the snow's falling. Isn't that cool? <laughs> you know, yeah, I love snow. Oh, maybe you want to build a snowman someday. Yeah, what are you doing tomorrow? You know, it's just like the engagement aspect for me is the key in relationship. When you get engaged enough with somebody, then you end up getting engaged. <laughs> you know, that's how it works. Mm. That's a great answer. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's yeah. one of the things I love about Marianne because she's so engaging. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible not to engage with her. You know? <laughs> but yeah. the key is to stay in your flow and not like say somebody talks a lot or they're super sensitive or they're really into sports or they're really not into sports or whatever it is. The key thing is to engage with them in a way that you're continuing to engage with yourself as well. So it's a balance. It's a give and take. Sort of like the exercise we're doing with the energy. Well, you're doing that with them in conversation. And by doing that, it'll create different openings. And with the openings, it'll take you places. Mm. I love that, the openings. Yeah. So the key, I think, to is engagement. And the engagement creates openings. And staying focused on continuing to be engaged as opposed to being in the opening. Oh, good. Now we're together. Here, I want to tell you everything. Well, maybe just lost that person because hmm. they wanted you. They don't want everything. They just wanted you right now. Hey, I love your smile. I love your look. I love how you look at me. Normally, that that's where relationships happen. So the more you can engage and receive and give, for me, is the answer. You know, I'll, I'll add a little bit of... Um... I had an experience a couple years ago where I was um, in relation with somebody and I shared with him probably on, on our, our third or fourth time. Actually, we, we, we kind of jumped in and spent like two weeks straight together. And um, I don't remember what the context how it came out, but I shared that I wanted to be a mother one day or I, just that I want to be a mother. And he said, he looked at me in shock and was like, you don't tell all men that, do you? And I realized after that conversation, because it was one of those things like that we question, oh my God, should I have said that? Should I have told him that? Um, but that's essentially what sort of kind of was the, the, the thing that, that beginning of the pulling us apart from each other. And it was perfect because we weren't, he wasn't my partner. And so also to trust what you share in each moment is the right thing to share each time. And when you're too much in your head about, oh, should I say this, should I not say this? What should I say, what should I not? Then it's like you've left the present moment and you're not, you're not really present in it. When I shared that, it was just something that naturally flowed out. And if the other person chooses to walk away because of what you shared, then great. <laughs> like you have more space. Yeah, found out. Right. A lack of synergy. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's jump into to Michael's question and then we'll, we'll say goodbye to each other. Yes. So your question, Michael, was about, I heard it very well. It's about commitment and freedom, right? That's why I'm with Marianne, because I have commitment and freedom. But the, the depends on what you're into. Most people, particularly guys, not just guys, I have this thing of like, well, I want to be with somebody, but I also want to be with whoever I want to be with, right? It's, I want to be free. For me, I feel free being in commitment. I don't have to wonder if, you know, like, I know what I have. That makes me feel more free when I have the commitment. And I'm also with somebody who supports me in, in being free, being free to do things. That doesn't mean, you know, being with other women. It means being able to go out and do different things so I can attend to myself. So if Marion, so a key thing that I didn't talk about is one of the most important things to me is to have my own space and be able to do what I want to do. Marion supports me with that as long as I'm bringing myself back to the relationship. And again, I'm, I'm, we're completely monogamous. So, and that totally works for me. So I'm committed to that. So you, but I feel like you have to come to terms with what do you want out of commitment and what do you want out of freedom? And the more you know what you want from commitment in a relationship and the more you know what you want from being free, then that's how you can approach a relationship with that. Now, that's general information. I don't know if you have anything more specific. Let's get to unmute you. Uh, I appreciate the answer and I appreciate the challenge to uh, sort of research those questions. I guess from a, 
Well, from from where where that question emerged for me, at some point, I realized that, um, and and perhaps this is the way that I'd seen relationships modeled in my family or wherever it came from, that I became aware of this. Um, well, I, I suppose it was a resistance that um, relates somewhere in my system. There was a there was a relationship or a or a meeting to relationship that wound up in it was you are losing freedom, you are losing um, commitment to relationship meant loss of freedom. Somehow that had become um, wound up in my system. And there's sort of intellectually, I recognize, well, that doesn't, that doesn't have to be true. And it, um, and I think it's kind of an awful way to think about relationship. I'm going to lose my freedom. Like, why would I ever choose that? Um, so what I was looking for in the question is um, looking for models, really. I mean, topic of the topic of the night, um, mm -hmm. looking for models to for for what is it what does it feel like what does it look like where those two things are not at odds where there is commitment like what's an example of of receiving freedom through, like how does one receive freedom more freedom through more commitment uh perhaps um i can just say that there's a tremendous amount of restriction that's required to find freedom. So it's, and you know, I'm a movement teacher. I look at nature and movement. And in order for movement to happen, there has to be the closing and the opening, the restriction, and then the opening, which is what creates the movement. So there's a natural, like, you know, your heart beats and it squeezes together, it gathers the energy together, and then it opens, and that creates the blood flow through the heart. And um, so what happens is, and just like taking care of our bodies, for example, if you take care of your body, there's a certain amount of restriction that you can't just eat whatever you want whenever you feel like it. So if you actually look at, well, what does my body need? There's a restriction of what I might feel like and what my body actually needs. So for me, it's honoring what my system actually needs is what creates the freedom. So there's a lot of freedom that comes as a result of committing to, to functionality. And, um, and so I know people, it's not popular, or people don't like the word like discipline and restriction, but it's through the restriction and the discipline that the freedom is actually experienced. In my experience and as I study nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what I come back to- Wait, wait, let me see if- Okay. How that's settled. Okay. Thank you. I, I did. Did that make sense to you? It, it makes sense, and uh, it it's going to need to settle. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I. I, I, I believe it and I'm, I'm, I think I'm in the process of finding, internalizing that, what that, living that, internalizing that, finding that, but, but thank you. It's a, it's a wonderful answer. I appreciate it. Great. Yeah. Great. And I think if you just like let it settle more, it'll make more sense. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a good question and something everyone struggles with. Yeah. And I also think it's a real maturity skill to actually orient to how to find the freedom inside of a commitment. It takes a lot of maturity. It's not just a natural thing, like a, a child. 
just naturally expresses themselves, but to learn how to work together with other people, that takes more maturity. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. I, yeah. I did see um, both Richie and Joseph having voices and our mouths open and hands come up. I'm just gonna repeat what I said is I support you in getting clear what you want out of a commitment in a relationship. Like, how is that going to nurse you? And really being clear, how is this commitment going to nurse me? And the same point, what do I need to do to be free? What do I need? And really getting really clear about both of them. And then seeking out somebody where you can do both that understands you. And you understand them. But to what degree you don't know what you want from commitment or you don't want from freedom, it'll create a lot more confusion. And the more you know what that is, the more you can look to create it. Sounds that's, like it. Yeah, that's a very important part of our relationship is a commitment and freedom. It's key, actually. Totally. Sounds like a great journaling exercise. Um, Joseph, what was it that you um, were itching to share? If we think about a coin having a top and a bottom where freedom's one side and commitment's the other side, they are in relationship all the time because without having a commitment to something, we don't actually really get to be with it fully. And commitment feels fantastic when we're truly committed to it. Right. Exactly. And exactly. commitment feels terrible when we're no longer committed to it, but we think we should still be committed to it. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> so it's not that there's a lack of freedom at all with commitment. There's a lack of freedom to pretending that we're committed to something that we're actually no longer committed to. So if we stay present to what we're committed to and we stay present in our communication with our partner to what we're committed to, then we have freedom in the commitment or we update related to the commitment. That's great. That was well said. Yes, agreed. Well, you said great too. Thanks. It's both great. I could sit here and talk to you all throughout the evening about relationships, because this is my favorite topic. I am obsessed with love. And I'm so grateful that all of you tuned in tonight and joined us. I know your time is precious and valuable. So thank you for being in the space with us this evening. Um, Richie and Marianne, I know you have some programs coming up. Actually, we I shared what we have on Wednesday, um, but every Tuesday, and Wednesday, Marianne hosts Inner Rhythms and Dance Alive. So if you want to share a little bit about your work and where everyone can find you and, and experience it as well. Sure. Um, well, first of all, you can go to my website. It's dancealive.com. And I lead movement programs everywhere from a dynamic movement workshops. I have classes. I have workshops. I have inner rhythms, which is a deep body meditation that trains you in being able to observe what's occurring in your body and to embrace it. I run um, leadership training programs. I do Take Charge Now. I have empowerment pods. Um, I have coaches and have private who do private dance alive training movement sessions. And um, it's a very dynamic program in terms of being able to really embody yourself and be able to bring that embodiment and that connection to yourself, to your truth, to your deepest uh, soul's desire and bring that into relationships, bring it into your work and just increase your overall health and vitality. And um, it's, I, I love what I do. I love sharing movement. 
I love movement. <laughs> I just love movement. I love teaching it. I love all my students. I have just wonderful students and I'd love to have any of you participate. I do have a Ride the Wave on Wednesday night where we're all on Zoom together. And that's like the introductory class to my uh, more in-depth programs. And I do have a group of my students that still meet outside at the beach and live stream my class every Wednesday night, even in the dark in the winter, they're meeting there, um, a f yeah, some of them. And um, yeah, all the work is, is just uh, really opening, freeing, and deepening your connection with your own vitality. Mm -hmm. So I invite you all. <laughs> mm -hmm. So dantalive.com, go check it out, experience the workshops. Richie, how about any any work of yours to share? Are you, are you coaching? I gotta run, but thank you guys so much. Hey. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Ian, bye-bye. Yeah, I do um, em empowerment coaching one-on-one -on -one for whatever anybody needs. I work with what their desires are. People are highly motivated, they really want something, can be anywhere between relationships, work, self, and um, I don't advertise myself. <laughs> and you just did. We just did it yeah. for you. That was yeah. the first time. Yeah, that's my first time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So Wonderful. Well, thank you both for, for coming out and joining us. We will upload this um, and some clips of tonight to YouTube. Um, so you'll be able to share the conversation with friends. And please come back and join us, Marianne and Richie. You're always welcome to come in and tune in to and, and enjoy the, the couples as well. And Joseph, I always love when you're here because we get to point to you as 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 studying relationships and love for your entire life as well. Um, so thank you for being in this space. And it was so beautiful to see you all, David and Jamie and Michael and Ramon and Monica and Meredith and Julie and John and. Um, and Jonathan, who has been moderating us this evening, uh, thank you so much for testing That's out some new technology with us and, um, and, and opening up the dialogue and the conversation. Well, that was great. Thank you guys for sharing everything. It was really uh, great to listen to. And, and uh, trust me, I was taking notes. Great. <laughs> Everyone took notes. I, I would, if we had more time, I'd be like, what did you guys write in your journal? Um, but thank you all for coming out for the evening. Uh, Jonathan, if you want to cue the, the, the music and, um, and have a beautiful evening and welcome to 2021. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. In. Thank you. you all made it happen. Thank you. Made it 2021. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Big Thank hug. You. Big hug. Big hug. Big hug. Big hug. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have music on that? No music on this one. Oh. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That was great. That was, that was great. That was really fun doing that. Yeah. That was fun. cool. Yeah.